Hey, welcome back guys. Today we're gonna to be doing part two of our Telecaster build. I'm gonna be showing you how to do a fret level. So you can end up with beautiful, glossy, shiny frets, silky smooth, just like this. Hey, welcome back to another edition of Addicted to Gear, my messy workbench. Today we're taking a look at the continuation of this project. This is a Guitar Anatomy Telecaster body that I got recently and I told you I was going to put together as a project guitar and take you along for the ride. As you can see, I dry fitted a few things here and today we're going to be continuing the project. Now I started off with a video on how to shape a guitar neck and basically I took this Telecaster style uh, paddle stock headstock and turned it into this which I think turned out extremely well. If you want to check out that video, uh, you can just go back into the links and uh, you'll see where I did that and see how I did it step by step. But today we're going to be talking about the continuation of the project. Now it may look like I've jumped ahead here, but actually I have not. Uh, I'm just dry fitting parts right now because I want to reuse some parts that I already have uh, so that I don't have to go out and, uh, you know, add up costs and stuff like that. So I'm going to be reusing this Wilkinson style bridge, which is a good quality bridge, nice compensated saddles here in brass. Um, I have some uh, pickups here that I'm going to be reusing as well. Uh, as you can see, I went ahead and just shielded the guitar cavities here. I did have some uh, leftover uh, shielding tape. You can use paint if you have paint. Uh, since I already had the shielding tape, I decided to go ahead and, and use that. Uh, I'm going to go with this pick guard, as I already, I already probably showed you this in a probably a Sunday live show. I think this nice pearl pick guard is going to go very nicely with the guitar color here. And you can see the rest of the cavities are all taped up, as well as the control cavity here for the electronics. Uh, I'm going to be going with uh, a control plate that I already have for now. It's not the best. Eventually, I'll probably upgrade that as well. But for right now, uh, we're just going to be looking at the continuation of the work that needs to be done on the neck in order to complete the, the project. Now, this neck is also from Guitar Anatomy, a very sweet looking neck, a nice dark fretboard, nice frets, bone nut as you can see here. Um, the thing with all of these necks is that you always want to check to make sure that there are no high frets, that everything is level. So I did check the neck and there are a couple of um, frets that are a little bit high. So today to continue the project what we're going to do is we're going to address those high frets and I'm going to do a really quick, quick and um, uh, quick and I think effective fret level to get everything ready because once uh, we're ready to put the guitar together we don't want to have to go back and level the frets once the neck is already on the guitar I think it's best to do it when you have the ability to do it off of the guitar like this all right, so the first thing I like to do whenever I work on a new guitar build and specifically looking at a new neck, uh, I want to make sure that the frets are all level because if they're not level and the guitar is put together, it's a little bit more time consuming and a little bit more finicky to do the fret leveling on a guitar body. So I prefer to do that while the neck is off the body. And to do this, you need a few things. It's not complicated but a few simple tools will make your job so much easier so first you want to have a straight edge uh, because we want to make sure that the neck is perfectly straight before we get started you're going to want to use something like a fret rocker that's going to be able to allow you to check which frets are high eventually you'll need some tape you'll need a little exacto to cut the tape make your life easier and if you have a uh, fret level um, you can make your own if you want to. You can use a um, you know a level if it's good quality and straight. You can use that. Put some two-sided tape on it with some um, 
you know, a, a good uh, grit of sandpaper. It doesn't need to be extremely coarse. Actually, if you go too coarse, you're actually just making extra work for yourself, but it's not extremely coarse because that, you know, if you go too coarse, you're just making extra work. You're also going to need something to mark your frets with. So the first thing I like to do, and it's not really complicated, so I'm going to move rather quickly on this. Uh, you want to have a straight edge. You want to put it on your fretboard and you want to sight the fretboard on the side. Make sure that when you're looking at it, the fretboard is perfectly straight. So I already went ahead and made sure the fretboard was straight because if you try to check your frets while the fretboard is not straight, it won't be accurate. You have to start off with a level playing field, so, so to speak. So the next step is I take a fret rocker and I go down the fretboard and just three frets at a time, rock the frets to see basically if any of these are high. Now if you get anything that's wobbling, uh, that indicates that the center fret is high. So you want to take note of that. Um, on this neck, I did notice that there were a couple of high frets, not extremely bad, but like this one is rocking right here. So I'm just going to put a little mark on it and go back to it later. So we know that one's high. We're going to continue going down the frets here. It doesn't really take that much time. You can go pretty quick. So this one is a little bit high as well. We'll mark it here. And it's not uncommon to get frets that are high on you on you fretboards. This is why I normally do this because I know that there's going to be at least one or two. This one here is also high. This one is high as well. And somebody brought up a good point. When you're doing this and you're checking your frets and you know that one is high, the uh, verification of the frets following that fret might be inaccurate because you're dealing with a high fret here. So what I normally do is I do a pass with the fret level, then I recheck to make sure that the subsequent frets after the one that we saw that was high or low uh, is good. When you get to these frets up here, you want to use the shorter edge because otherwise you're going to be trying to rock more than one fret, which is not going to be accurate. So this one is high as well. And let's get to the bottom. This one is also high. So if there's more than one or two, I normally just do an entire fret level. If you're dealing with only one, you know, maybe max two, you can probably just level out those couple of frets. But if it's more than just two, you probably want to do the whole thing. So now that we've identified that we have some high frets, there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Um, I'm going to mask up the entire fretboard with some masking tape here. And that's going to protect the fretboard while we do the fret level. So let me go ahead and show you how I do that. There's a couple of ways that I've learned to do it. Yes, you can use an independent fret protector and go fret by fret, but I find that's a little bit slow. So what I like to do is just, uh, you know, just tape up the entire thing. Uh, one of the things that I've learned is that if you use different size tapes, it, all, it actually makes it easier. Otherwise, you have to cut them all. And what I also do to make my life easier is I actually put in a strip of tape along the side of the neck like this and I'll tell you why I do that it doesn't have to be extremely precise or anything um, I do that to make it easier to remove the tape once I'm done because 
I'll show you why I overlap the fretboard on both sides with some tape like that and then I can just peel off the entire thing instead of having to take off each individual piece of tape which uh, saves me a little bit of time so uh, if you're wondering how I learned to do this it's trial and error and practice there's really you know there's, there's a couple of shortcuts that you could learn along the way but generally practice makes perfect so uh, if you're gonna be taping it up um, the big you don't always have to use fat um, tape by the way you can use uh, thinner tape um, it's easier to go with fatter tape uh, at the higher the, the frets down low here because it basically allows you to move quicker cover more ground you just have to overlap it and the idea here is you just want to make sure you're protecting your fretboard because when you're doing any kind of work on your fretboard with any kind of tools you know it's not often that you're gonna get issues or you're gonna you know but eventually something's gonna happen something's gonna slip you know and you don't want to mar up a, a pretty nice fretboard with a, a gouge or something like that so as I'm putting the tape down I'll continue talking because the process is rather boring but I, I guess I'll give you some additional info while I'm doing this um, you if you can get some uh, tape that is not super tacky because the more tackiness you use, the harder it is to, to take it out and clean it after. Uh, if you don't have anything that is low tack, no worries, use what you got. Uh, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. I usually use whichever masking tape I have lying around till I'm out. And then if I have a choice, I'll go with something that is a little bit less tacky. I hope you guys are doing well and I hope you guys are enjoying the channel. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that I post and I to keep things interesting I try and jump around between product reviews live Sunday shows where I uh, you know answer questions and um, take the opportunity to see what you guys are up to as you can see right now I switched the type of tape I went to the uh, thinner style so I don't have to necessarily cut the tape to size it just makes it go quicker and uh, if you have even thinner even better when you get to the higher end of the fretboard but for now this will work just fine so as I was saying uh, I hope you enjoy the content that we're putting here to because I know a lot of you guys do get value out of these type of videos and you have mentioned to me how much you enjoy them and I should do more so I'm gonna try and do that as soon as you know whenever I get an opportunity the issue is time guys time you know it's I don't always have the time to do this it does take time um, it obviously is longer to videotape something like this and show you how I do it than to actually do it straight out alone but if I can document the process for you guys and you guys can walk away with some additional knowledge uh, and it's helpful then I'm happy to do it all right, so now we're getting to the, the section of the fretboard where it's going to be too too tight. It's not going to fit there. So what I do is I usually just cut the tape down the middle with a little exacto, just like that. Take it apart. Try not to get it all uh, you know jammed up or gummied up, and you just continue the process. Very simple. Um, Many of you have asked me, like, you know, how I learned to do this, and really uh, through watching other people do it, uh, reading, and, uh, and practicing. If you have an opportunity to do it yourself, um, I would recommend you start off with a fretboard that is not very valuable to you, because when you're learning, you tend to make mistakes, right? So if you have something lying around, an old fretboard that you don't mind using as a guinea pig, that would be the best way of doing it. Start off with something cheap. And sometimes, you know, the old fretboards do need some TLC. So you can actually end up reviving an old fretboard that you find, it, you know, wasn't that great to begin with. And uh, get some additional use out of it. 
So why not start with that? That's what I did. I usually went to, um, you know, I usually took an old fretboard that I had from a very inexpensive guitar and work with that. Okay, so as we're getting to the other end of the fretboard here, I'm just going to move it over so you guys can see. Um, the process is long and boring. This is why a lot of uh, guitar techs, luthiers, will charge a lot of money for anything to do with the fretboard because it's time consuming. And there's really not that many shortcuts that you can use to make it that much quicker. There are a couple of tricks, but you know, generally it takes time that it takes, you know. And if you try to rush it sometimes, you're not doing yourself a favor. You know, like taping up the fretboard. A lot of people will say, you know what? Forget it, it takes too much time, it's just a couple of frets, I'm going to skip that process. <clears throat> Not a good thing, trust me guys, trust me on that one. You want to protect your fretboard. Um, there we go, so we're getting there, we're getting there, it just takes a little bit of time. Uh, one of the things that I also wanted to mention to you guys is if you can buy good tools right off the bat, like you know, I made my own fret level here uh, to sand the, the you know the, the, the fretboard. They do sell you know dedicated um, tools for that. And if you if you have the money, get good tools. Uh, the reason for that, guys, is because good tools will last. You're going to use them over and over again. Um, in the past, you know, certain tools. I've realized that I need, I need to buy them, I need to spend the money on good tools. Other tools you can get, are, you can get, you can get away with certain things, but not everything. So I would suggest, you know, if you're going to get, for example, um, if you're going to buy a set of files for your nut, get good ones. They're expensive, I know, they're not cheap. But I've tried inexpensive alternatives. They don't work really well. You're better off just spending money and getting something good. All right. Um, I'm just telling you that through experience. The you know something like this to file the frets, um, to level the frets. I've I've gotten away with using this um, for a while now because it, it's relatively straight. I mean it's. You know, there, there's not a lot of, um, if you get a, a good level, uh, they tend to be straight. So you can get away with it. You know, eventually I might buy something else, but for right now, it's been working for me. All right, and a lot of the tools that you see on Stumac and, and places like that, um, and they got great stuff. But what I realized over time is that you know, before Stumac was around, uh, people were making their own tools, right? I mean, what do they? What do people do before Stumac? They made their own stuff, right? So you can do the same in many instances. But now we have the luxury of people making them for us. Of course, we're going to uh, pay a premium for these kind of tools. They're not going to give them to us for nothing. They're expensive sometimes, um, but that's. Uh, the give and take part, right? You give, they take. Anyway, so we have it wrapped up now. So we're good and we're ready for the next step. All right, so the next step is to clearly mark up all of the frets. So what I like to do is I like to put a little indicator marker here on the frets that we know are gonna be the trouble ones. Okay, just like this. So we know which ones we have to address. Once they're done, then we will have to mark all of the frets. All right, so now that we have everything taped up, the next step I usually like to do is, is basically mark up all of the frets so that when we level them off, we can see which ones are touched, which ones are low, which ones are high. And I usually like to mark off the frets that I know are the trouble frets on the tape so while we rub off the marker, we can still identify which frets we need to recheck, right? Darken up the frets like that. You want to basically make sure that all of your frets are dark.
just like that. And the reason why, I'll explain in a minute, is because once we take the level and start filing down the neck frets, uh, we want to identify which ones of the frets we touched. And if a fret is low, the marker will stay on. If a fret is high, the marker will come off before the frets that are low. So it's a visual indication of how the frets are seated on the fretboard. Okay. Now this marker is a little bit dry unfortunately so I'm probably gonna chuck it right after this. I'm gonna try and get the most out of it. So now we get to the fun part. When everything is marked up we get to the leveling part. We can do it with our level and sandpaper or we can use something like this which is a file which is epoxied to a um, piece of wood. I like to use both actually. Now the file will leave more chatter obviously but it'll go quicker uh, and the straight edge will soften things up. So I usually use the file first and do a first pass with that and then follow it up with the sandpaper. So when we do this guys you don't want to be too aggressive. You want to be gentle. I do a first pass going in both directions and then I go in one direction only. Now already you, you can start seeing that some of the uh, marker is coming off. Um, eventually more of it will come off. Okay. So since the, the frets up here weren't really the critical ones, it was the ones down here, I'm not spending too much time up here. But I am trying to pay attention to the ones that I had marked as being um, high because I want to make sure they're completely marker free. Now we know that we've touched all of these. I'm going to go with the sandpaper now. I'm not pressing hard, I'm lightly going over the frets and unlike the file, when you're using sandpaper it doesn't really matter what direction you're going into, you can go frontwards and backwards with the file, you try and uh, use the cutting teeth of the file to guide your direction and your stroke. I'll recheck it once again with the fret rocker just to make sure that everything that we've done uh, improved the situation and didn't make it worse, right? So this one was high. no longer rocking this one is still a little bit uh, needs a little bit more attention there this one as well this one's good this one's good This one needs a little bit more attention. So at this point, what I do, because there's only a few that are high, and I don't like to take off additional additional material when I don't have to, you can do it with an individual file. You have something like this that you can use, which is a file that's rounded, and you can concentrate on the ones that are uh, just still slightly high or still rocking. So that one we said was good. This one I think was still slightly high. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a few passes now with this and check it again. And 
and you can usually identify where the fret is high. Sometimes it's just one part of the fret. Okay, go over it a bit more. Okay. Eventually, you'll be able to tell by using your sense of touch if you're doing the right thing. See, like here, it's really just this part, the center part of the fret that needs a little bit more attention here. The, the ends seem to be okay. So, and you're, you're, you're really only taking off like a fraction of a millimeter when you're doing this at a time and you can hear when it's rocking all right you basically will keep going till the rocking stops like that. All right, good. Now, let's try this guy again. This one was good. This is why the markings help, you see. This is why the marking on the tape come in handy because once you sand off all of the um, the marker it's hard to remember which frets were high and I think we're good so that didn't take very much time at all um, the next step now is to polish the frets we're going to recrown them properly and uh, just put some shine on them and what I like to use for that is a combination of things. Uh, I will usually use sandpaper, but I'll start off with a tool like this. A tool like this, which is basically a diamond um, fret crowning um, tool that's rounded off so that you can put the crown back on all of the frets. So I'll show you how I do that and this is a long process so I'm not going to show you every single fret but I'll show you more or less how I do it. It's very simple you just want to go back and forth on the frets. You don't want to overdo anything at this point you just want to try and get rid of as much of the chatter that you created with the other tools And the idea here is less is more. You don't want to overdo it and take off too much too much material because we're gonna let we're gonna let the sandpaper do most of the work. And here you want to have a good some good lighting because you want it you want to be able to see if there's any gouges in the frets that you need to take care of and I'll usually let the fret um, sanding take care of that and I'm going very quickly here I would normally take a lot more time but because I want to just show you the process real fast uh, I'm, I'm tending to um, move faster than I normally would here Okay. All right, so now that I've 
um, recrowned the frets. Um, the idea with the recrowning is basically you want to put the round back into the fret top because when you file it down and sand it down, it'll become flat and you want to make it round again. So I didn't spend that much time on it. I don't want to introduce more chatter, but I do want them to be rounded again. Um, and then what I do here is I just recheck the frets again just to make sure that after all of the process is done that everything is still nice and level that we haven't introduced any additional low spots on the fretboard and um, that the areas that we intended to fix are still fixed because whenever you're removing material things change so everything seems to be good now alright so once this is done and everything is checked and level what I like to do then is start taking care of putting the polish back in the frets and generally when you rub your finger over the fret you don't want to feel any kind of scratchiness now there's a few different ways you can do this they sell things like this which are what they call fret erasers um, and they come in different grits so this is 400 this is a thousand I have lower grits as well but the idea with these are that you can work your way and basically repolish the fret same way you, do, you would do with sandpaper what I find with these is that the process is a lot slower than using sandpaper so what I like to do is start off with some sandpaper go over the entire fretboard and I usually will do six eight a thousand and depending on how much of a shine I want to put on it I'll might, I might go all the way up to 2000 uh, or I might also use something called Jewelers Rouge which is a paste that is basically designed to put the shine back into metals and that is a little bit more tricky to find so I'm gonna show you the process without that today but I just want you to know that there is an option for something like that if you have the inkling to find that you can use your Dremel and the uh, rouge and basically polish it all back up I usually use that as the last step in the process so I'll show you what the the rouge looks like and I keep it in a bag because it tends to dry out it usually comes in a block like this and as you can see it has the consistency of like a hard clay uh, but if it's dried out it tends to get really hard but what you want to do is keep it uh, in a place where it's not going to dry out as much and you can just basically take a little bit of this rouge and then with your Dremel and the buffer on your Dremel go over your frets it goes a lot quicker and you end up with a really really shiny fretboard so whenever you're doing fret leveling sandpaper is your best friend as you can see here I have a collection of different grits of sandpaper everything from six eight a thousand two thousand um, and you will need these grits when you're doing uh, fret leveling uh, I would not recommend you skip grits because uh, you're not gonna get a good result if you do that so these are wet and dry um, sandpaper as you can see here I have sandpaper that goes all the way to 3000 grit uh, it all depends on how much shine you want to get in here but I would say to start off uh, well, you would probably start off with a 600 grit sandpaper like this. If you want to use it wet dry, you can soak your sandpaper. I usually soak the sandpaper if I'm doing finishing in terms of like paints. But when I do fret levels, I don't usually soak my sandpaper. Okay, so you can take this, cut a little piece. You don't need much. This is where your scissors or exacto will come in handy. You just be, be frugal with your sandpaper, guys, because you don't need as much as you think you do. 
So I'll just take a little piece like that, cut it off, save the rest for another project. So what I like to do is I like to take the paper and I usually put it between my fingers so that you have something to work with. You just basically want to wrap it around a finger or two like this so that you can actually go up and down your fret like this. Now a lot of people will do this after you're done. So in other words, you do one uh, one uh, treatment this way and then one treatment this way. Um, I don't know if you really need to do that. Some people like to do it this way because this is the direction of your bending. So you're not going to get as many, you're not going to feel as many divots, micro divots. I tend to like doing this better because it ends up with a better end result in my opinion. So already you can see some of the shine coming back. And you don't need a lot of passes but you want to make sure you hit all of the frets. And when you're doing this you can let your fingers be your guide. You can tell when your fret is um, better because it feels slick. There's less resistance. Okay? So that didn't take very much time, did it? You can look at the reflection and see if there's any dull spots and maybe just give it another little hit. But at this point, that's as much time as I'm going to spend with the 600 grit. Next step is 800 grit, same thing as we did with the 6. And a good tip is write down your grits on your paper. Because when you cut it, you don't always have the indication of what it was. On your small sliver, you can save your grits and um, be frugal. Because sandpaper is not cheap. All right, so now we will take the 800 and then we'll do the same thing. And some people will even be OCD about it and count the number of slides that they do to make it even on all of the frets. I don't usually get that crazy about it, but I do try and stay in the same ballpark, right? So if you're using six or seven, Strokes do the same all the way through for all the other frets. Be consistent. Now while we're doing the, the boring process here, I just want to remind you guys that I do have a bunch of videos in my YouTube channel that cover a lot of different things including, you know, building part casters, reviewing pedals and effects and the gear and amps all sorts of things so if you're new to the channel and uh, you don't know what we're all about we're all about gear we're all about guitars we're all about enjoying the process of playing guitars building guitars buying guitars selling guitars and not just guitars everything that comes along with it so i invite you guys to take a look at um, what else is in my video archive and if you do like this kind of stuff and you want to support the channel you can do so by subscribing to the channel or maybe even consider donating to the channel uh, because you know this stuff takes time and um, it's always appreciated okay so now we're gonna just cut a little sliver off the 1000 grit here once we have it marked up, we're going to continue the process. And with every subsequent grit of sandpaper that you pass on your frets, you will see your frets becoming more and more shiny. And the idea is to end up with glossy, satiny frets. And when you pass your thumbnail or your fingernail over it, you don't want to feel any kind of roughness on your frets.
and it's exactly the same process till you get to about 3000 grit. Yes, it's long. Yeah, it's boring. Gives you a lot of time to think. But it also makes you appreciate a good playing guitar. And with a good level fretboard, you're going to enjoy lower action, smoother feeling bends, and you're going to enjoy the entire guitar a whole lot more. Please don't skip any frets. We have a tendency sometimes to want to cut corners. Don't do that. Make sure you hit every single fret on your fretboard. The extra time will be well worth it. All right. So as we're getting to home base with three, 3,000 grit sandpaper now, you'll know you're getting there when the frets look nice and glossy, your fingers hurt, the tape on your fretboard is nice and dark and grimy. This is why I highly recommend you guys uh, you know, use the masking tape because it's going to get messy. But don't fear. The thing that a lot of people um, freak out about when they're doing this kind of stuff is that they don't realize that you're actually going to cause damage before you can actually make the fretboard better. So you're introducing scratches, you're, you're leveling, you're flattening out the top of the fretboard, um, you're going to introduce scratches with the files and the initial run of uh, you know low grit sandpaper, but that's part of the process. You have to make it worse before you can make it better. And if you just have the patience to see it through, you'll get a good end result. Uh, you know, the idea here, guys, is not to rush it. Like, I'm actually going pretty fast here today. And I wouldn't normally do this, but it's for the better cause, for education. So, to help you guys out there better understand the process. So, the next step after I finish with the 1000 grit, uh, sorry, the 3000 grit, is uh, I'm going to be doing some final polishing with the Dremel and the Jewelers Rouge. Now if you guys don't know what Jewelers Rouge is, it's basically a compound that jewelers use to put the shine back in rings and, and whatnot when they need to polish them. And it works extremely well on metal. So you can see that you know the fretboard is pretty shiny as it is right now, but we're going to go the extra step and I'm going to break out the Dremel and the Rouge and show you how I do that. Okay, for this next step, it's going to come in quite handy if you can get some of these polishing wheels. These are felt, tiny felt polishing wheels. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put one on the tip of your Dremel tool. And a Dremel comes in extremely, extremely handy and, and really uh, speeds up the process. So what you're going to want to do at this point you're going to want to take your your rouge and you're going to want to run the Dremel in here just to coat the polishing wheel here and then you're going to apply it on the fretboard. This gets messy sometimes guys, the stuff flies all over the place so I recommend going uh, slow with your Dremel. So put it on a slow setting to start off with not too high, alright? Before you start with the Rouge and the Dremel, I would recommend you actually use the fret protectors, the fretboard protectors at this point, because you don't want to burn through the tape and go into the top of your fretboard, all right? Alright, at this point uh, the polishing is pretty much done. I think you can see just how glossy the fretboard is right now. It's got a mirror shine and um, if you run your finger over it, your fingernail, you should not feel any scratches because we went all the way up to 3000 grit plus we did 
the jeweler's rouge so basically at this point the jeweler's rouge should have done its job you can go as um, you know as long as you want with the rouge but basically as long as you don't feel any scratches you're good to go uh, it's always a good time to check the fret sprout situation in this case um, the fret is um, the ends are perfect if they were not perfect I would take the time to level out the frets on either sides but in this case we don't need it so at this point you um, I think you can understand why I recommended taping up the fretboard as you can see it's taken quite a beating what's the old saying an ounce of prevention a pound of cure something like that um, so now uh, I'm gonna show you why we taped up the fretboard the way we did because when it comes time to remove all of this stuff at the very end instead of going individual strip of tape by individual strip of tape which does take a long time you can actually just pull off the entire thing like so in one easy or sometimes semi easy movement but it does beat doing this right otherwise you would have to do every single one one at a time now this is why I say use tape that is not too tacky because otherwise it's overkill you know for this type of thing but as you can see I protected my fretboard really nicely there's no damage to the fretboard um, you can easily burn through the tape when you're using a Dremel and it does get hot so I highly recommend using a metal uh, fretboard protector like I showed you and you'll end up with a nice clean fretboard and really glossy frets at the end of it all so at this point what I'll usually do is um, just go over the fretboard with some oil uh, just to lubricate it polish up the frets one more time just by hand to clean the oil off the frets and I think we can call this fretboard done so I really hope you guys enjoyed this really quick tutorial and phase two of the guitar build project there'll be more coming we'll be able to put the guitar together put in the parts do the wiring and i'm going to show you how to do the final adjustments as well so please stay tuned for that if you like this kind of content give me a thumbs up if you like this show and you like what i'm producing consider subscribing there's a lot more tips coming your way